this week on the Auto Trader Podcast. The Same. DeLorean, no, yes, the DeLorean, yes, but also the Hilux. That was there as well. Oh yeah, no, yes. that Hilux in the movies. Stop it, that's in, both of you. Yes. That, that was yes. so South African, it's ridiculous. Like, exactly. <laughs> the, the, uh, the DeLorean- You gotta like bring a, up a Hilux. A Hilux was <laughs> nasty in the movie. We, we are very, we are very I know astute. the DeLorean, but the Hilux, come on. We're astute South African men, this is expected. You know the South Africans like, you know the Hilux had to tow the DMC <laughs> when it broke down, eh? <laughs> Welcome back to the Auto Trader podcast, where we explore all things automotive. This week, I'm joined by Wandile Sishi Hello. and Tay Imbiri. <laughs> and today, we're going to take you through a journey through time, 70 years of iconic cars of the silver screen. These are the coolest cars from movies and series. And we've come up with a list. I'm sure there's some prizes, mm -hmm. surprises here from Tay and Wandi. I'm mm -hmm. keen to hear what they yes, have to say. Of course. But yeah. we're gonna start with the post-war era, the 1950s. Now, the first car I'm gonna bring up is not- Wait, can I have a question before you yeah, even yeah. go into that? Go for what it. What makes a car an iconic car? It doesn't have to just be cool, right? Cause you mentioned it can cool be cars, with but like what it does, it, like anything goes what in it, terms what, of- Whatever makes it memorable. Okay, um, memorable. And whatever jacked up the pricing now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if if that's the car from whatever show, you yeah. know, then it it becomes quite iconic. So you see the car yeah. and you think of this TV show or this movie, basically. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And that that leads me into this first one, which is not from a 1950s film, but it is a 50s car. It's a 1958 Plymouth Fury, yep. which many of you would recognize as the killer car from the movie Christine from wow. 1983, which is based on the famous Christine novel by. Uh, Stephen King, the yeah. killer car. I mean, everyone I think can picture that red car on the I think a cover. lot of people even have done things post seeing that car. Like it, like it, it sort of encapsulated that spirit into other movies. Yeah. Like Jeepers Absolutely. Creepers, for instance, I'm sure a yeah. lot of inspiration there. And it's weird when you see, I can just picture that immediately and it takes me straight <laughs> back to Blockbuster video uh, in my hometown and I just think that Christine, that killer car. Yeah. And it's weird, my mom's name's Christine. So <laughs> so she had a killer car, which is- Oh, but really, your mom. It's Sorry, with mom. my mom. <laughs> Sorry, mom. <laughs> Sorry, Sean's mom. <laughs> the next one is a 1955 Lincoln Futura, which you might know as the first Batmobile. The first oh, Batmobile, yeah. yeah. I mean, super iconic, um, mm. lots of childhoods there. And childhoods of granddads, I would assume. Um, but it's yeah, definitely yes. one of the ones that, that you know, kind of yeah. made the superhero um, sort of, I don't know, Monica or second to sidekick uh, to a yeah. hero sort of become a thing um, as a vehicle, which is kind of strange, but you know. Even yeah. if it's just a sheer styling they did for that particular era of Batman also. I believe it's not Adam West Batman, we know the cheesy yeah. Batman, as you'd know, yeah. um, but something where, even I see models of it at these little model shops and things like it's, it's how it's revered. Let me say yeah. for the most part. I mean, again, the cars from decades the later, yeah. yeah, decades later, it's still revered. I mean, <laughs> yeah. like so many car designs before they got the safety and legislation involved, they really, all that boring stuff. Yeah, they Who really wants that. They really used to look so cool. <laughs> yeah, which, crossover SUVs. And, and again, that was from a show from the '60s, but a car from the '50s. But speaking of cars, unrestrained by modern design standards. Yeah. The Aston Martin DB5. I think pretty much the coolest car ever. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know about that. So that's the stretch. It's I think uh, you're reaching there. It's, it's, that's that's cool. the James Bond. It's the Bond, James Bond the, car. The James Bond car yeah. from Goldfinger. Aggressively I mean, British. Aggressively. <laughs> Do, was it like, um, I mean, this is product placement. Let's be honest, right? Like in, in a lot of these movies, it's, it's purely product Absolutely. placement. Absolutely. But do Absolutely. you think that was um, a mm. conscious decision that... James Bond needs to have a really, really epic car. Yeah. Who's the best person to do it? Something British. Or do you think it was just like a random, we need a sponsor or something? Um, I would imagine it's a bit of both. It's, a, yeah. it's like yeah. we need a, a quintessentially British sporty car mm. to represent uh, Britain's secret agent, right? So there's been many times when a car is actually like well. not great. People don't like it. And then it goes into a TV show or a movie mm. and then everybody ends up loving it. Well, um, I have a car yeah. coming up on that list, which oh, yeah. was maybe the ugliest <laughs> car in the world and is now <laughs> yeah. massively collectible. So we'll, what speak, is we'll speak about that, uh, which, is, uh, which is cool. Oh, uh, here it comes. Um, and then moving to Another car, which I know producer Reno is a huge fan of. It's the 1968 Ford Mustang GT390, finished yeah. in Highland Green yeah. from the Ooh. movie Bullet. Bullet yeah. Steve yeah. McQueen. Okay, Super another car. Another mm. 
I think that's it's cooler in, than Aston Martin. In contention for the coolest car. I was about to say, I think <laughs> it's know, better but, than the D5. That's the thing. With the cars of that time, at least the difference between British and American, American cars were very brutish yeah. versus uh, the British cars, which was more an emphasis on elegance, pretty much. I mean, it was fitting to the characters of those particular movies, which does make sense. So I guess it's a preference thing, maybe, one did it, but... Uh, no, it's, I, I like, it's I one is like cooler the than the other. I don't like elegance. I'm the I'm from I'm wearing a leather jacket. You know what I mean? Like I'm the opposite so of put it this I'm way. Like, <laughs> if, if you so you have your daily car, right? Would you rather have the bullet Mustang or the the gadget infested 007 DB5 as your Sunday drive in your garage? Which one is going to start in the morning? Is the question. Well, probably the Mustang because the Aston Martin is going to have some kind of electrical problem, but. <laughs> <laughs> Tough one, but for me, I still, you know, I don't know. I like a good, I, I like yeah. a good, mus- like a, a good muscle car. Muscle car. Yeah. yeah. Well, then you're going to love what I have next. What because have next on this? Let it out. Oh, 19, 1971 like- Vanishing Point. Dodge Challenger RT. I never saw the movie. I'm going to, I'm going to be, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. I was, um, I was thinking, so I was like, thinking this, this one for me. <laughs> that's one sense. of, that's one of the most, uh, again, one of the Love most. Love the car. One of the most iconic yeah. cars. I mean, what color was it? Um, it was black. No, oh. sorry, white. The black one is Vin Diesel in, uh, yeah, in Fast and Furious. It's a, it's a white car in Vanishing Point. Um, and if you watch, mm. I think it's a movie. I'm trying to think. It's a Quentin Tarantino spinoff movie. I'm also um, thinking of it was also on the tip of my tongue. Is it, <gasps> is it pop it's, fiction? It's, it's part of Planet Terror. What's it called? This death one. Proof. Oh, okay. okay. So in Professor Death Google. Proof, the vehicle yeah. that they track, ah, uh, they see. track down the killer with is one of these Challenger RTs that's from Vanishing Point. Mm. It's like a, it's a movie accurate. I'm looking at it right now car. and it's cool. It's cool. I like, it's I, yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, it's cool, period. The next car is, I think, just as cool. Pontiac Trans Am 1977 from oh, Smokey yeah. and the Bandit. Come on. With that firebred livery on there. That's actually a really nice one. Yes, I of saw course. A, I saw a Fiat Uno once for sale with the same- I've seen many cars with, with the same. With, with, with the gold <laughs> eagle on the you, you need to have it. Oh, you no. have, <laughs> you have, eagle. <laughs> I guess in terms of good decals, there's a fun car that just came up, but I guess it's more TV show rather than movie in a sense. Um, the Ford Galaxy, I believe it's Ford Galaxy from Starsky and Hutch. Yes. With that iconic decal on the side. Same thing, oh, it was yeah. Super same, cool. same sort also of- Also pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was, uh, and I mean, Trans Am, just super- It's a Trans Am, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's a Trans Am, Burt <laughs> Reynolds. Doesn't get more American than that, you know what I'm saying? I mean, mm. Burt Reynolds was also in uh, Dukes of Hazard. Yes. I mean, that's uh, the other one I was thinking about, Charge Charger. Yeah, Dukes of Hazard. That's yeah. what I was thinking. That's also another super iconic movie car. Very orange. Let's not speak about what's on the roof. Oh, yeah, so okay, far we, not, like, I think these are like, they're cool. But I think there's cool ones still. They are the there's cars. The cars that are coming the, up. It's decades. from our era, though. I like, think that's the yeah. thing. It's because yeah. this is the boomer SB, era. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we are we are currently in the boomer section. We are moving to <laughs> our section soon. All the torpies, um, please uh, comment in the section below. Thank you. All the bullies report to the dance floor. Which um, period are we going into now? Which we're going we're into the. <laughs> we're going into the. Now we're just roasting. We just roast. Now we're just roasting our parents. <laughs> Sorry, the, Bob. Sorry, Dad. All the bodies. <laughs> <laughs> Straight into the 80s. What do we have in the 80s? The Let's 80s. <laughs> we've got the the DMC DeLorean. This is Back to the Future. Back this to is the Future. Uh, Marty McFly. Yeah, yeah oh, Marty yeah. McFly. You know, I mean, I loved the shoes. That I've, funny enough, the Marty McFly's, the, the Nikes, they re-released them now. And that's, you yeah. know, still very iconic to me. But the car, I mean, come on. That, that was quintessential, this is what the future is. It was I've, futuristic and- I've got some insane- The DeLorean, no, yes. The DeLorean, yes. But also the Hilux, that was there as well. Oh yeah, no, yes. that Hilux in the movies. Stop it, that's a, both of you. Yes. That, that was yes. so South African, it's ridiculous. Like, exactly. <laughs> the, the, uh, the DeLorean- You gotta like bring a, up a Hilux. A Hilux was <laughs> nasty in the movie. We, we are very, we are very I know astute. the DeLorean, but the Hilux, come on. We're astute South African men, this is expected. You know the South Africans like, you know the Hilux had to tow the DMC <laughs> when it broke down, eh? <laughs> Because our looks is never break. <laughs> yeah, I mean, super, super iconic. Um, I think for years, even today, when people think about a futuristic sort of car, a lot of things are still mm. molded around the DeLorean. Um, kind of a shame that it didn't come back. I know there was some time when they were supposed to do yeah. like a re-release of the car, which so would have been I, epic. I've got a, a bit of a nerdy fact about the DMC. Yeah. And Go on. the steel used for that. That's real steel, no? Yeah, but it's, mm. it's from Middleburg. The steel is from South Africa. Yes. Well. 
Wow. So there that, you go. Lots of South African things happening in this movie. The, the Harlocks more, as well. <laughs> the more you know. <laughs> yeah. The more you know. Then moving on to, I think this might be, okay, we, we said the DB5. I said the DB5 was cool, but mm. 80s cool. You don't get much cooler than Kit from the, Knight Rider. We're back my, to my, my love of now. cars. My love of cars. Fun yeah. fact, my love of cars began by watching Knight Rider as, as a child with, yeah. with my dad. Why I'm still sitting here at Auto Trader, why I wanted to, you know, get into this game was that specific car. I loved Kit. Michael Kit Knight's Kit was, Kit was, was the rad. coolest car for me. It's it, it changed my life. I think it's the coolest car ever, in my opinion. And I mean, driven by the Hoff. Yes, I mean, of course. Hassle. Far too much chest hair. But, you know what I'm um, saying? But I mean, <laughs> that's the 80s. And that, that noise it made, whoa, whoa. I mean, on, I mean, so it's iconic, so cool. it even appeared in a chicken licking advert of all things. Exactly, Imagine. yes. It, again, it's Africa. <laughs> Re- recently, in fact. Imagine that. We're localizing content here, guys. <laughs> yeah, all the time. I think it's the coolest car ever. So far, this is a STF for me. This is, um, I put that one there as the most iconic. But yeah, the most never know. Iconic. We could, well, the next one, I don't think you're gonna, you're gonna think is the most iconic. But for me, mm. whenever I think of Jurassic Park, yeah. I think of oh, yeah. those Jeep Wranglers. Yes, yes, of yes. course. Yeah. Um, and, and then it immediately takes me to that glass of water. <laughs> yeah. It goes <laughs> doof, yeah. doof, immediately when I think of that Wrangler. Yeah. Um, super, super cool. Still cool. That. I think it's still cool. Um, yeah. Would I say that that car made the Jeep Wrangler, or that movie rather, made the Jeep Wrangler super like the car to have. There would, would be a few movies, I reckon. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the Grand Cherokee was in a few movies in the 90s yeah. and the 80s, but I think just iconic because it had Jurassic Park on the yeah. door and it mm. had its own bespoke Jurassic Park color scheme. Yeah. yeah. Like uh, at Festival of Motoring the other day, there was a Jurassic Park Wrangler, oh, there, yeah. which looked super cool. <laughs> so it just took me straight back to the movie and it's one of the coolest movies, I think, uh, Jurassic Park. If you took images of that vehicle at Festival of Motoring this year, please tag us in it. That's actually going to be pretty interesting to see. It was yeah. a cool car. Very, very cool. Anyways. Now moving on to the movies from 2001 and it, it it's I mean, we're talking cars, yeah. There's, there's, there's only a few that you know kind of stand out. This is this is the the movie that started the tuna culture globally. Yes, yes. And Fast and Furious, of course. And uh, there are so many. I was about to say, movies. which one are you going to bring up? <laughs> I'm going to bring up the Supra with the with the roof sort of chopped off in orange. Yep. Uh, and it does with that two nice Z. decal on the side, yeah. Yes. What um, was that decal anyways? What is it supposed to be? It was like a lot, what's it called? A knight lancing forward. Yeah. So is, okay, is that what it is? Because I was like- From, from what I recall, I run out of could that we'll, be? We'll what could that, that be? And obviously the, the Eclipse, which had danger to manifold and then its floor panel fell off, which is <laughs> yeah. not related to the manifold whatsoever. <laughs> and then just so, firing shots at the car and it just- And Vin Diesel's RX-7 rotary that doesn't sound like a rotary. I mean, I mean, there's a deep. few cars. We also have the R34, uh, it's gotta mm. be, you gotta mention. There's from, a few cars from the, the yeah. Fast franchise, which I think need the, an honorable mention at least. Absolutely. And then after yeah. Tokyo Drift just went- <laughs> You know, funny Sorry. enough, Tokyo Drift is actually my I favorite fast movie. I but said it. Th- why did they turn a four-wheel drive Evo into a rear-wheel drive drift car? It is so weird when you have mm-hmm. a, a huge number of rear-wheel drive Japanese cars to turn into a drift yeah. car. That is true. It's the weirdest thing, man. Yeah. And then they put a Stang engine in it. <laughs> yeah. Sacrilege. <laughs> but then again, Sacrilege. I think but that was the only thing that was thing. strange about the movie was that. But <laughs> Every, I mean, the rest was cool. The rest oh, was dude, cool. I, I like the movie. I even yeah. like um, Lil Bow Wow's like the fist. Yeah, he's Lil Fist. The, the Hulk, thing, the the, Hulk the, mobile. The, the, yeah, yeah, that's popping out of the, the tire cover in the yeah. back. That was a weirdly cool car. What was yeah. it? A Nissan Cube or something? It, yeah, it was a It was a Tig one, I think. Was it a Tig one? It was not a Tig one. No, 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 not Tig one. What was that? Volkswagen and Sharan. That's what I was thinking about. Was it a Sharan? I think it was from what I, I recall. I think it was. Did yeah. he go Euro? <laughs> he, he went Euro. We'll, we'll Google that in a second. <laughs> but anyways. <laughs> super epic car. Super epic franchise. I think they, not as cool as the beginning stages, let's be honest. I think some of the earlier stage like cars in the franchise were definitely like too like, fast, too furious. There yeah. was yeah. that pink S2000. There yes. was the, the R34, one, yeah. Yeah, the R34 that Paul Walker drove. Yeah. Um, and then they got mm. the, the, that, uh, Evo, which was that weird yellowish color. In the later franchises, like anything almost, stand yeah. out. So like nothing really like yeah. popped for me. I'm just trying to think. I think yeah. it's, it's also just testament of car culture of the time as well, because yeah. that's when things kind of went more, dare I say, crossover in a sense. And it's like, 
you know, yeah. how do you make crossovers exciting? And also in the tuna car culture at the time as well. I mean, at this current time, it's like a lot of it is stunts, if I can yeah. say. Yeah. So how do you make a Fast and Furious Tay will movie bring up about someone going over- to, to talk about stunts. Exactly, exactly, time. just to tease Whenever it, I because talk I love to him, teasing like, it. The stunts, it's like, dude. Stunts is the <laughs> downfall of man, guys. <laughs> exactly. Like you can't make a Fast and Furious movie about someone trying to get over a speed hump. But anyways. <laughs> <laughs> what are we moving on to now, boys? We are moving on to- um, 2000s, I'm assuming, yeah? The 2000s, but a movie that started Mm. the Marvel Cinematic Universe properly as I'll we know I'll, I'll guess yeah. As we yeah. know it. And then it also kick started the super the German supercars we know it in the yeah. in the two thousands. You're talking about the, the R eight, I'm assuming R eight in yes. Iron Man. Mm -hmm. Yes. With the gated manual gearbox oh, driven by Tony shit. Stark. With the lights that oh, the, yeah. oh my god, that that's actually that might be the most iconic probably mm. of the last twenty years, I'd say. Yeah. Um movie car. I mean it changed how people perceived the German supercars. Mm -hmm. And it was just cool. Audi. Like Iron Man, well, it was, yeah, it was, and Audi. Yeah, it was a good Audi. It was just cool. It was just super, super cool. Um, yeah, so much to say there. I love Iron Man, it's my favorite. So, you know, I think maybe I'm also fanboying a little bit. Actually, one day, did you see yeah. any R8s on site? Um, yes, there's a few. There's, there's a, a few. few. I've, been, I've been trying to buy, there was this one R8s on site that I'll be, well, I've been he's trying to thinking buy. about. He, the, he's the, the, Iron Man. This, the Iron Man one. Boys is um, cooking. <laughs> Watch him, he's cooking. I, um, I heard that sentence. But it's, it's, the mileage is so high. But I think now with the R8s sort of being discontinued, um, maybe these, these cars are actually, the R8s are just gonna become even more expensive. I'm sure they're gonna be highly collectible in the future, especially these gated manual V8 ones, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. the Iron Man spec as they're known. Um, for me, that uh, it just sparked my my enjoyment for the Audi brand. Uh, yeah. I always enjoyed them from Group B Rally and stuff, but they then started yeah. making sort of econo boxes in the yeah, 90s. They yeah. were boring. And then R8 was like, bam, yeah. look, we are here. We are like sharing stuff with Lamborghini now mm. and our R8 is here. It's going to be Iron Man's car and yeah. Also something worth mentioning as well, because our producer Overlord uh, just came into my mind <laughs> yeah. now. What about Eleanor? Oh, geez, GC500, come from, on, come on. Gone in 60 How seconds. could we even yes. speak about this without bringing up Eleanor? That's for, <laughs> man, this, this is getting really tough to see like what's the coolest. GC500, Eleanor might be go, baby, go. the most exactly. valuable movie car. But it's also one of those cars I think has fallen into intellectual property obscurity in a sense, because I know some people have tried to make replicas of sorts and Yes, the make owner, replicas. I think the owners of the rights of the person who, I don't know the full story exactly, but um, came through and said, we're shutting down all these projects. We can only have one Eleanor because it was the intellectual property or something. I found that quite bizarre. And it's one of those- um, I find it evil. Yeah. Why would you do that? I mean, it's it's one of the it's an appreciation. most beautiful cars ever yeah. ever made. The GC500, that GC500 specifically is just, you know, and, iconic. And That's what iconic is. Producer Overlord Reno has added another one. Ferry, I don't know. Ferris, Ferris Bueller. Bueller. Ferris Bueller. Uh, for Ferrari California. Camper. Ferry, it sounds French, but Look, I like Ferris Bueller, uh, his day off, you know? Yes. Great, great movie. Um, <laughs> what's, the, what's the opening line? Um, hmm. Oh man, I forgot now. This is awkward. <laughs> this is awkward. Hopefully the producer will put it in. Producer Reno, <laughs> what does Ferris Bueller say in his first line in the movie? Yes, please tell us. Producer Reno. Producer nah, Overlord we'll, we'll Reno. Put it, we'll put it in post. But yes, but is it iconic? Yes, I mean, it's it's there, but I think there's other movies. I want to bring up two just before we run out of time here. Yeah. Twilight, there's a very, very iconic car there. Actually, yeah, there is, a Volvo. Is it it's a Volvo. Volvo. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It changed the image of Volvo uh, for a lot of people. It made it cool. It works. It worked. Um, the connotation. Is it iconic? <laughs> to me, it is. Look, those, those Volvo C30s were but nice. But that's the they thing. Were. If if a car features in a show and it it leaves a lasting impression on you, it is therefore yes. an icon. It's that's an icon. that what is what bringing me to the PT Cruiser Cabriolet and the Chrysler Sebring Cabriolet. That's how you're Cabriolet. gonna segue into that. Oh. That's, that's because <laughs> it's driven by Michael Scott in the office. And, oh yes, and he says it's Britney. The Sebring. He has a he has Why? a Sebring and a PT Cruiser <laughs> yeah. Cabriolet company oh. cars. <laughs> Those okay. are iconic cars now because fair he enough. drove them. Fair enough, fair enough. I'll give I mean, it to fair you. enough even. And I mean, there's even another famous TV show as well, which featured, which is ranked one of the ugliest cars ever alive. Jog my memory. Is it uh, Breaking Bad? Yes. With the uh, Pontiac Aztec. <laughs> and that is painted in a particular color. 
But that color wasn't a factory option. They painted it that color to make it even more bland for the show. Make and it make it a factory color. Like I'm sure now that's the color to and, have. And it's now just, <laughs> they are just collectible because Walter White, the yeah. biggest meth kingpin in the history of television, <laughs> yeah. drove a Pontiac Aztec throughout the show. And that makes the car iconic as a result. They did the complete opposite and then tried to make something bland, but made it more prolific. Like the, if that is not uh, the Streisand effect, I don't know what it is. Well, a uh, producer, well, no, copywriter, Boozy, yes. has reminded us of uh, a Mr. Rowan Atkinson's of Mr. Course, Bean. Of course, Mr. Bean, the, the mini. With his mini with the black bonnet. I mean, there's there's oh, yeah. two movies with minis that, oh, it's Mr. Bean, obviously, this, this show with the uh, mini, yes. but there's another yes, iconic uh, movie which has some minis in it. The Italian job. Yes. The correct. old one and the modern one. The modern yes. one with the R53 Cooper S where you can hear the supercharger whine. Mm -hmm. nice. Mackie Mac, Warburg mm -hmm. in there. <laughs> hundred percent. So many also definitely there, but I want to throw in some other cars from the 2000s. All right, shoot away. The Camaro, Bumblebee. Oh yeah. Yep. Um, Transformers. Actually a few few cars from the Transformers franchise. This mm -hmm. is the Camaro. There's also the 458, arguably the most beautiful car um, I've ever seen in my life, the Ferrari. Awesome Transformers. Producer Reno. Got to speak up. about them. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, you bring up <laughs> yeah, a Ferrari. There we go. He says thank you. <laughs> what, about, what about the Aventador in The Dark Knight? Oh, uh, yeah. Christian Bell <laughs> drives a black Aventador. Yeah. This is why I was saying earlier. It, it could I don't, be a black mobile in and of itself. But yes, yeah. but I don't. Okay. To be fair, people, whenever they see an Aventador black one, they, they're like, it's, mm. it's, it's bad the Batman. It's right. the Bruce Wayne. Yeah, yeah, to be fair. But I mean, that car is always going to be iconic. I don't. I don't want to give its flowers basing it off of Batman. Mm. Speaking of Mr. Bean, what yes. about the Reliant Regal? That three wheel thing that he keeps flipping <laughs> yeah. over in every episode. Yeah. That's now iconic because he keeps flipping them over. 100% oh, definitely got to be there. British engineering, brilliant. <laughs> I guess I'll throw in maybe one car as well that appeared in the end of Hot Fuzz and then also the beginning of Baby Driver as well. Because I have an agenda, you <laughs> lads probably know what car it is. Baby <laughs> Driver, oh, okay. Um, it was, was a support. Was, was a Subaru. Yeah, of a, course, a it, Subaru. Wow, of wow, course, it was wow. a Subaru. It was a Subaru. Exactly. It a was Subaru. in the end of Hot Fuzz, and they were both WRXs, interestingly. So at the end of Hot Fuzz, just to end off the film, it just shows, I forgot his name in the movie, doing a handbrake turn, baby driver as well, yes. him also just having fun in one. So yeah, there you go. There's my agenda for the day of Fulfilled. He's not- always got to bring it up. He's not inserted a Subaru into the yeah, conversation. It was that like, and Stance, it's just, you'll throw it in there. Stance and Subaru in there I somewhere. I like tuning Stance, that's the thing. <laughs> and I think there was also quite an iconic uh, STI hatch in one of the Fast movies. I think after, I think after Tokyo Drift, I just forgot yeah. we, we which Fast was which, but there was a hatch STI in one of the movies that was yeah. very cool. Is um, there any uh, like South African cars? I mean, obviously we've spoken about Kits, which was iconic here, but is there any movie cars or show cars that like blew up here? I'm gonna try and think. There must be one. I'm sure in the comments, someone's gonna bring up a like very South African sort what? of. What there, did there, Andre, there has to be a city golf in one. What did Andre Stander drive? Gusheshe, maybe something. That's uh, It's gotta be, it's gotta feature somewhere. Producer Reno. <laughs> Do we throw our dear colleague under the bus for that? Do we? Producer Reyna, what did Andre Stander drive? Uh, uh, oh, oh, oh. For those of you that don't know, Andre Stander was our most prolific bank robber in yeah. South Africa. And it looks like he drove a Cortina, Cortina? XR6 Interceptor. Ah, okay, oh, well, there, there it is. Yeah, that and is. And that will probably be yeah. in the movie Stunday if you want to watch a cool- That was South a super, super famous car in, in South mm. Africa at one point as well. I think it was you know one of the few- yeah, South Africa has got some great legends and greats. That's yeah. such, such beauties, I must say. Okay, boys, I have to give you guys top three of the list that we've just sort of gone through now. What, what do you, what, yeah, what is your favorite? Of oh, let's take off first. Take you first. <sighs> it's gotta be the one of the ones I mentioned earlier, and that has to be the Starsky and Hutch Ford Galaxy. That has to be one of them. Then um, that's Boring. third place. Boring. Then second place. <laughs> is gonna have to be uh, the Challenger, as we mentioned. Okay. First place, it has to be the Supra. It's just that iconic of that era. That's what it has to be. I'm the throw a curveball from uh, producer Reno. One of the most iconic cars from a South African context, the Toyota Cressida. 
that yes. Madiba was driven in. Yes. Yes. Of course. Yes. yes. I mean, that is... Uh, My uncle had one. That, yeah. His Unbreak- first car. Unbreakable. <laughs> Unbreakable, yeah. those things. I think I think anyone in the South African context, like you have one family member or relative that has That's had a Crusader at one yeah, point. 100%. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my top three has to go. I'm going to start with RS. The RA from Iron Man mm-hmm. has to be my number three. Then I have to, just, I have to say Elno. Elno is, um, man, just what a, a beautiful car. Just mm-hmm. It's just a piece of art. And then Kit. Kit for me has to be number one. I think Sentimental. for me, the most iconic car when I think of movie cars is because of the profound effect it had on me as an 11 year old. It has to be one of the Fast and Furious cars. And I'm going to mm. go with Supra yeah. purely because of that last scene yeah. when they, I used to drag you back in high school. That whole, <laughs> that whole thing when they jump the Supra and he's got NOS and the steering wheel. That for me, that is the epitome of an iconic car. Mm. Um, and I really like the Aztec. For, for Walter White yeah. because that car became one of the, it was one of the most hated cars ever. Yeah. And because he drove it, even though he's a bad guy in the show, spoiler yeah. alert. Um, <laughs> yeah. he, he, um, I was watching that. I was watching that. I thought it was good the whole time selling meth. Um, but just because he drove the car, it became an icon and our people like the car. Yeah. And then third, I have to give it to the DB5 because yeah. I think that's one of the most beautiful cars ever. It and is. when I think of James Bond, yeah, I think is. of a DB5. 100%. So Sean sure. Nurse in a Pontiac Aztec at a car show coming near you. <laughs> yeah, if I can get one over the border. Um, <laughs> I'd love to see you go across South Africa and what in, yeah. Better call Saul. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I'd love to do that. Just Somebody sponsor it, one for putting us. Putting it out there, please. <laughs> Send me one from the US. <laughs> but that uh, that that's going to wrap it up for us, guys. Thank you for taking a trip down memory lane, covering 70 years of iconic cars yeah. in, um, in the movie world. And if you have any other suggestions for icons of the movies and any glaring omissions that we've had that producer Reyna has also pointed out to us, <laughs> let us know in the comments below, interact with us, like, subscribe, and comment. Let us know what you'd like us to, to cover in the next episode. Guys, thank you so much for being on the episode. Until next time, cheers. Yes, sir. See ya. Search Orchard Trader.